Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes because you might get bored during this boring recording and when you get bored you might find that your eyelids also get bored and when your eyes and eyelids get bored they tend to want to close and you know if you're a pilot or something you probably don't want your eyes to close mind you you might not be at work you might be at home yeah, because pilots don't work all the time, do they? Or a lorry driver, you know, you don't want to be closing your eyes. Generally, the whole point of this, you know, only close your eyes, only close your eyes, <laughs> only close your eyes when it's safely, when it's safe to listen to this recording. You know what I mean. So, the point of this podcast is to bore you so that your mind slows down maybe switches off and you can relax deeply physically emotionally and maybe if falling asleep is something that is required you may find as you relax that you start to just drift into a lovely dreamy state now I think what I th- what will I talk about today hitchhiking that's going to be my object now I know it's not necessarily something you can hold in your hand but you do use your hand to hitchhike or the thumb so I mean, hitchhiking isn't something that's... I don't think it's done so much these days. Had a bit of a bad rep, I think. Um, But when I was younger... Because I'm about 93 now. So when I was a young man... um, I used to hitchhike. Did it a few times. And the first time I hitchhiked was when I was 16 and I was out with a friend and we were drunk and this is probably 11 o'clock in the evening the pubs had shut and he decided he wanted to go to visit his girlfriend his girlfriend lived about 40 miles away And I remember saying to him, how are we going to get there? And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, we can't walk it really, can we? He said, why not? I said, because it's too far away. He he, He said, how do you know it's too far away? I said, well, anywhere is too far away. If it's out of town and there's no buses and there's no trains, neither of us can drive. He said, well, I can drive. I said, okay, we'll, we'll use your car then, shall we? We well, haven't got a car. Well, okay. So where's your driving license? I well, haven't got a driving license. But you can drive. Yeah. How? I learned it off television. Huh? Yeah, Duke's a hazard. Okay, fair enough. So, we are stuck. We can't get there by car, because we don't have a car. We can't get there by train. Oh, we don't have a train. We can't get there by bus, and, you know... Unfortunately, I forgot to bring out my private plane, so we can't do that either. He said, you got a private plane, have you? 
I said, no, I was being sarcastic. He said, why do you use words you can't spell? I said, let's just shush. So trying to be strategic, what are we going to do? How are we going to get there? But there was no way. And then he said, why don't we hitchhike? Hitchhike? Yeah. I said, what, what do we need to be able to do that? Just your thumb. Yeah, but we need the rest of our bodies as well, won't we? I mean, my thumb doesn't come off. I don't know about yours. He laughed. <laughs> and uh, so we decided in our drunken state to hitchhike. And that's what we did. But we seemed to spend most of the night walking. And one thing I noticed is being on the motorway, we was on the grass, we weren't actually standing on the motorway of course. We were on the like the embankment and the grass and you know, in a safe space. But the lorries first of all the lorries were driving fast. And every time they went past they seemed to almost drag us into the road. Because the, I don't know, the pressure or the, almost like we're being sucked off, not sucked off, sucked sucked in, not sucked off by the lorry, but sucked in by the lorry. And I only weighed at 16, I was probably about 35 pounds, so I didn't weigh much. In fact, I had to wear heavy boots so I didn't float away. Very light. Like big space, big metal space boots, and he's. We sort of just. I said to him, first of all, the lorries can't see us." He said, "You yeah, know." I said, "Well, we need to do something." Um, we didn't have mobile phones back then, so we couldn't turn the light on or anything to sort of catch the attention of. Uh, a lorry driver heading our way um, so in the end we had to walk and walk and walk until we finally found uh, a part of the motorway that was actually lit and it was a lay-by so we went there uh, there was actually a, a, a lorry already in the lay-by and um we went up to ask him. And you might think, why are you saying him? Why would you assume it's a him? Well, this was 1986. Um, there was three female lorry drivers in the world back then. Uh, and we went into the... It's a lie probably, but it was predominantly men. Fact. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's different now. There's, um, I think there's now seven. <laughs> I don't know. It's still predominantly man, a man's not man's job, but pre still predominantly held by men. Don't really know why, but uh, I guess it's just. I suppose it's uh, people that work in laundrettes are usually female. Again, a fact. And I've been in every single laundrette in the country. And I've not seen one man working in one. Not yet. And that took me 15 years to accomplish just for that one fact. So I'm very studious. And I like to put a lot of effort into these recordings. I hope that that is recognised. Thank you. So we went up to the lorry driver that was already there and had a little peek into the cab, but he was busy, so we didn't want to disturb him for what he was doing. So we went back and stood underneath where the, it was most lit up, and we put our thumbs up. Now, when I was 16... 
I really believed that putting my thumb up in the air would automatically result in a lorry or a car or a van or uh, anyone driving on a motorway or any other kind of road to automatically see my thumb and think, oh, I must pull over and help them. Didn't seem to work that way. And I couldn't understand. But then a few years later, I was on the motorway in a car. And I saw a hitchhiker. And something occurred to me that really, really surprised me. Opened up my eyes to one of the problems that hitchhikers actually have. Is we were going quite fast. And as we was driving towards these hitchhikers, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't actually see their, I couldn't see their thumbs. So we weren't sure if they were hitchhikers or not. Because that's the one telltale, they have their thumbs sticking up. I mean, it's not always the case, it could just be that they're just saying hi. But probably, the chances of that is probably 50-50. I know there are a lot, there's a big group of people uh, around the world, they're called the High Club, and they actually just travel around motorways with backpacks, just putting their thumbs up to people. Um, the first member first member of the High Club was the Fonzie. So... So, um, we're just standing there, waiting and waiting and waiting. And eventually, eventually, the a lawyer did pull up. We got in. And I think he took us... I'm not sure if we had one or two lorry rides... But we eventually ended up where we were going. And I remember what I think one of the journeys the the lorry driver was talking to us about something, but I can't remember what. I think he might have been I think it was actively interested in pottery. So he wanted to talk about pottery, but I only I only completed the first two years of my pottery degree, and I didn't feel I felt like I knew and knew quite a bit, but not quite accomplished enough to match his enthusiasm. So I just kept quiet, and eventually we arrived at the town where we was going to sort of meet his girlfriend and it was I think probably five o'clock in the morning and we had nowhere to go there was nothing open this you know those were the days before things being open 24 hours a day so there's no no cafeterias or no pubs, although there's not, I don't think there's that many pubs that are open that time in the morning, but I'm trying to think of some place that would be open at that time in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. I think even the public toilets are closed. I didn't get that. Why Why have they closed them? I mean, how are you ever supposed to meet anyone new if they close the public toilets? But I just, in my memory, we were just walking around. And although it wasn't cold, it wasn't winter, it was summer, I think. Even in the summer, it's cold at five o'clock in the morning. Apart from when it isn't. 
not five o'clock in the morning, but when it isn't cold. It's cold, but when it isn't cold, it's okay. But there's not many, not many mornings like that during the summer where it's just really nice, like all night. And I think you notice that. I noticed it more when I was camping. A different occasion, by the way. I wasn't camping at this time. Or now, even. I was, this is in the past. And well, most things are, I suppose, aren't they? But I was camping and lovely during the day, in the, in the evening, or like during the night. I had icicles growing off my anus. It was, honestly, it was so cold. So, um, we were cold. And what we did in the end is we found an, a, like a block of flats. And we just went in there. There was no uh, security door. Uh, we just went in and went to sleep on the stairs. I think after that we went and maybe got something to eat at a cafe. Had a breakfast or something. And then he went and saw his girlfriend who was on her way to school. And. I can't remember if she spoke to him or not. And then that was it. And then we came back. I don't remember how we got back. It might have been by train. Or by coach. Or by bus. It wasn't by plane. Because I said I left my private plane at home. My private jet was, uh, I couldn't sort of take it out because it had a puncture. So I don't know how we got back, but we did get back because, well, I, I'm i not still there. We definitely got back. I can't remember how. We didn't hitchhike. We thought about it, but I had a sore thumb. I thought, well, if I didn't stick my thumb up, how are they going to know? I think he did. I thought he did so. Well, I could put my thumb up. I said, yeah, but I think um, I think my thumb is better. No, it's not. Mine is. And we we argued a little bit, and I thought, well, it'd be sh- it'd be such a shame to ruin. Um, an amazing friendship over a thumb so I just let it go still a bit angry about it if I'm honest I still feel that my thumb was better Um, I mean that's 70 years ago but I'm still still a little bit agitated by it I'll be honest at the time I've never been so angry but it's okay. I mean, they say time is a great healer, but for that, it wasn't. For that, and my thumb, I'm not showing off, but I have quite an exquisite thumb. I'm look at it now. I can't look at my thumb without feeling a big, raging sense of pride. It's the only part of me I really like. I mean, if I had my way, my whole body would just be one thumb, one big thumb. I don't know if you heard the lady outside going, hmm, <laughs> we call her Flemmy. She's in the garden, Fleming up. It's lovely. Lovely and oh, how attractive. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Flemmy. She doesn't know she's called Flemmy. That's okay. Surprise! You think she'd know her own name by now, wouldn't you? It's a bit of cruel, cruel name to give your kid. So I, the next time I went to the hitchhiking world of life was 
I ran away from home. And I think I was probably 17. Now, officially, I was, I was already living on my own anyway. But I was staying with my dad for a while. And he we had an argument. And he just annoyed me so much that I thought, no, that's it. I'm leaving. And I did. I took a carrier bag with some biscuits. And some... It was a hot day, so I got some suntan lotion for me thumb. And decided to, <laughs> to, to go hitchhiking to get out of the town. Because I didn't have any uh, fare for buses or anything. And I decided to go to London and be homeless. Yeah, I made some really good decisions while I was a teenager. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go and live on the streets. That will teach him for moaning about me not doing the washing up. So I. That's what I did. I walked down the motorway again, and I didn't get any lifts. And I kept walking and walking and walking for about. Five hours. And then I realised that. I was hungry. And I'd already eaten all the biscuits. And worse than that. My thumb was starting to get dry. I'd used all the suntan lotion. I didn't realise there was only a little bit left. I put a little bit on my bald patch. Now, you might think, bald patch? You were 16. It wasn't really a bald patch, but I like to pretend that I had a bald patch. It's one of the things I used to do when I was a teenager. I like to pretend that I was elderly. So I'd like to pretend I got a bald patch. Sometimes I'd walk around bent over with a walking stick and stuff. I just, I don't know why. It was... It's kind of like a hobby of mine. That'll explain why I've got such back problems now. Irony, eh? So I'm standing there thinking, ooh, I might as well just go home and hitch. So that's what I thought. I'd hitch home. Maybe I'll get a lift back. And I did. Luckily, I got a lift to back home again. They stopped, stopped, and they said, Hello, dear. I said, Hello. Uh, like, what are you doing standing out here? I said, I'm hitch hitchhiking. They said, Oh, we weren't sure. We weren't sure if you were just saying, Hi to us. I said, no, no, hitching. I'm definitely hitching. He says, you'd like to get in? I said, okay. So, um, I put the Zimmer frame in the boot and then got in. And I said, uh, you take me, it, just like where, where I was going. I said, I'm going into town. And they asked me, where have I been? And I said, so I've been to Yarmouth once. Went to Wales on holiday a couple of times as a kid, camping. They said, no, no, just now, where have you been today? I said, oh, okay. Um, I, I was running away. They said, why? I said, because my dad moaned at me for not doing the washing up. And they said, that's not really a reason, is it? That's the, the lady, but the man said, yeah, that is a reason. It's annoying being moaned at about stuff like that. And she said to him, well, if you did it properly, you wouldn't get moaned at. And then they started arguing. See, what I didn't understand, what happened next was a bit weird, because they started chucking pies at each other, which is annoying, on, well, weird on both point, two points. Firstly, I didn't know where the pies came from. 
Thirdly, actually, secondly, very dangerous when you're driving. And thirdly, I was hungry. What a waste of a pie. But eventually they, they calmed down and started laughing and tickling each other and stuff. Very dangerous drivers, I'll be honest with you. So eventually we got into town, they dropped me off, I said thanks. Had a little kiss and a cuddle and then, then I came home. My dad didn't even notice I was gone. Here's me, I'd left home. I was going to move to London and be a hermit. I've been through all this big whole adventure with the pie flingers and my thumb was very, very tender. And all he had to say was, why isn't the washing up done? It's like starting all over again. So, you know, that's that's that story. That's the end of that. It wasn't really much. I did the washing up, and then I sat down and watched telly. That's kind of the end of that story. <laughs> Not really very exciting. Um, another time, I hitchhiked all the way up to see my stepmum who moved away when I was 16. I hitchhiked to see her uh, from, it was probably 150 miles, something like that. And it took, I think it took um, 13 hours to get there. I had quite a few cars and um, lorries along the way sort of take me. It's 13 hours. There's a lot of time of me walking and just standing there. And when I did eventually get there, I phoned her up, my stepmom. And she came and picked me up in her car. I thought, oh, I wish I'd have thought of that before. I would have just done that at home. But the chances are she wouldn't have probably wanted to drive that distance. And... She made me pizza and chips for dinner. And she said, I'm oh, sorry, you can't stay because we've got someone else staying over who lives in your town. So someone else who lives where I live was staying over for the night, so I couldn't stay. Oh, cool. No worries. And I think she gave me fare to get home on the train. Drove me to the train station to make sure I got the train. I didn't, what did she know I was going to do? Hang around. So, yeah. Well, spend all the money on donuts and then hitch back. No. I decided at that time that I wasn't going to, two things... I was never going to visit her again. And I was never going to hitchhike again. And as far as I know, I think that's yeah has been true. Yeah, neither of those have happened. I never hitchhiked because it was such a haul, such a long, long day. And Yeah, I didn't, didn't do it anymore. That was it. Apart from when I went to France. So on the way to Dover, my friends who was driving me there and I was going to, I had a tent and I was going to stay in a tent for a couple of weeks. They uh, picked a hitchhiker up and we ended up I ended up going to France with a hitchhiker. And we spent about five days travelling through France on foot. And hitchhiking, 
getting lorry, you know, pick, getting lorries to pick us up, cars, because uh, he hitchhiked all the way from Nottingham. So it's a heck of a journey. And then we uh, occasionally we got trains and we had to, or a bus. So yeah, I, the whole I never hitchhiked again was false. Sorry about that, I forgot. And then yeah that was it <clears throat> yeah I don't think I hitchhiked anymore after that I think I was done I think I was hitchhiked all hitchhiked out if you know what I mean no more need for hitchhiking for moi just trying to think any other time have I hitchhiked No, I don't think I have. No, I think that's it. Whoops. My chair clicks. It's the, the armrest. Sometimes when I put my arm on the armrest, which is kind of what it's for, isn't it, I guess. It The armrest moves because it doesn't happen with my left arm but my right arm is so much stronger and heavier and probably three times more muscular than my left arm for some reason and it seems to put a lot of weight and pressure on the armrest and then it, it sort of the armrest goes oh or sighs like oh not again he's putting his arm on me again I do, and then it just like, oh, and it moves in protest. I don't know why. So that's that's pretty much my boring objects talking about hitchhiking. Yeah, there's nothing else really to say. Um, I realise it's not really a boring object, just a boring subject. So take care, thank you for listening, and I'll be back again another time. Bye-bye.